What is going on guys? I hope y'all are having an amazing day. It's early May in Texas. The mosquitoes are biting hard, but the weather is absolutely phenomenal. The sun is setting really quick, so I need to hurry up and get this video rolling. Last night we had some pretty bad thunderstorms, so hopefully that means the pigs will be up in these fields tearing up the super soft dirt. So um, David and I, and hopefully Kyle, if he can get back into town soon enough, we'll get a hunting vlog going. The last hunting vlog for a while is my guess. I'm sorry, y'all have to hear that, guys. But the school season is ending, which means we're all going home for the summer. We're going to be busy. Might not be able to hunt for a while up until fall, but hopefully we can end tonight with a bang. But enough of that. Let's get to what y'all came here for, how to make your bog pod not suck. So I'm in a lot of hunting Facebook groups and I hear all the time just people absolutely bashing on the bog pod death grip. And I agree, this bog pod right here is nowhere near as nice as a two vets tripod or a fat boy tripod or even a vortex tripod. But you're also looking at $400 to $1,000 just for a tripod, which is honestly insane in my opinion. This tripod right here, if I had a completely bone stock, I think I paid 140 for it on Amazon. This one is absolutely completely bone stock. This is David's tripod. He paid $200 for this just because it's in Mossy Oak Bottomland, but he plans on upgrading this just like I am to make it way better. But I just wanted to say, you can make an inexpensive tripod so much nicer than it was before and make it completely doable for a hunting rig if you are a fairly active and hard hunter like I am. This completely suits me. And I don't feel like paying the almost thousand dollars for a high-end tripod so the most obvious and major upgrade in my opinion is getting rid of this junk clamp the the death grip in the bog pod death grip this thing along with the added pieces to it is almost three pounds which is insane to me this has so much weight to it and the second you remove it you're going to be mind blown how much lighter it is and you need to replace it with something like this the problem with these bog pod death grips is you can move it side to side, up and down. You can't tilt this at all. So if you're on uneven ground, good luck. You're not gonna be able to try to line up your shot if you're on any uneven ground. With these, I'll I'll get a, a closer video of this. This is called a ball head mount, which is really designed for originally photography with an Arca Swiss plate on it. This thing, I can move it almost whichever way I want and I will always be level. So let's get closer and I can show you a little bit more about it. So here is an absolutely bone stock bog pod death grip. As you can see, you can adjust this to move left and right. This right here, adjust the up and down. And then on this side, this is what makes the clamp work. But it's so rigid, this thing sucks. To get this out of here, there's a little screw. Hopefully you can see this. Hopefully it's uh, right about there. If you take out this little piece right here, there's an Allen head right here. I believe it's an Allen head. Haven't done this in a while. It's definitely an Allen head. An Allen head. You get an Allen wrench, you can unscrew this. This entire piece comes out. And then you can move over to upgrading to a better head. Let me get right to that. So this right here is my personal bog pod, the bog pod that I use 24 seven whenever I'm hunting. And this right here is a newer 54 millimeter ball head, which was originally designed for cinematic photography, any sort of photography with something called an Arca Swiss plate on it. And this thing runs, I want to say 50 or 60 bucks on Amazon. I will uh, post a link down in the description below. But recently in the gun community, this has become really popular, especially the Arca Swiss plate. I will quickly show you all how easy it is to set my rifle on this but um to quickly show y'all how to install this i guess I'll, i i can try to see if i can get this apart oh man i have it in tight there we go so whenever you buy this on amazon which i just dropped it but i don't care because it's honestly pretty high quality it comes like this and then I forgot the size of this hole. I will post it somewhere right here. Whatever size this needs to be, this bolt, along with some washers, that can fit in this hole. I'll show you what this looks like. It's just an absolutely solid hole. 
you can fit this right up through here. The, the washers will hold it in place. And then you can, I'll let you know what, how, how many inches long that, um, bolt is, but you just screw that in slightly having problems right here. It's usually not this hard. I don't know why it's being difficult. There we go. Start getting it in tight. And then ideally you want to have a wrench on the bottom to hold it in place, but I can just tighten this by hand and it is good to go. And I'll show you all right now how easy it is to fit a rifle on here. So here is my 7.62x39 with my IRA Rico Mark I, the rig I use to kill all my pigs with. And the main thing that you want to do whenever you invest in one of these is you want to get something called a Orca Swiss plate. These are run about 20 bucks on Amazon, I believe. And the main important thing is you need to make sure that you can screw in a little set screw right there the importance of this is is whenever you put this by the way let me show you how easy this is to put a rifle on an arca swiss mount throw it on there slide it back and it's in you just come over on this side tighten this piece right here a lot of times you'll have like a lever those are a little bit more expensive but this little tightening knob works fine for me but the purpose of having this little set screw right here is whenever we're walking, we have these guns on our backs. Hopefully y'all can see down, down in this angle, we're walking like this, all this movement. And a lot of times whenever we're shooting all this recoil to the back, if that set screw isn't in here, if say, say the gun is right here, it's gonna slowly start walking back and you're gonna be unlucky and this gun is gonna completely fall off your tripod if you're carrying it, which is gonna be a bad day. So, with this, having, having that set screw in here, there's no way it's gonna move all the way back. And watch this. Watch how easily I can move this gun around even if this piece is locked. This is so much smoother than that bog pod death group. I can move all the way over here if I wanted to. I don't know why you would be shooting like that, but if you wanted to, you could move it all the way down. This is so much nicer than that bog pod. You can tighten it, it's not moving. You can loosen it, get right here, tighten it again. It's not moving. If you want to, you can have it tightened loosen this right here, moves horizontally all day long. And this saves so much weight. It is insane. And this is probably one of the best investments you can make to your bog pod. Now you may be asking me if you invest in one of these Arca Swiss plates, does that mean that every single one of your guns need to have an Arca Swiss plate on it and you have to spend so much more money? Technically, if you want to have the full functionality, yes, but there is a way around that. Say you have a rifle that you can't put an Arca Swiss plate on or you don't want to. I will show you how I got around that real quick. Just like usual, this unscrews, pops right off. You can move this gun over here. And then I have the original, let me leave this rifle right here. I have the original Bog Pod Death Grip clamp that, I, that it came with. And I managed to screw an extra um, Arca Swiss plate. This isn't any special M-Lock or key mod plate. This is just a normal photography plate. I think it actually came with this um, ball head mount. I managed to screw it into the holes with the existing screws that came with the original clamp. It honestly wasn't that hard. And now I can place this in here, tighten it up, and now I have a fully functional bog pod just how it used to be but it's even better one it's a little bit higher two now i can move whichever way i want grab this savage mark ii that i have amazing rifle for 250 dollars by the way especially if you want to use it as a suppressor host very accurate now you have that clamped in you can move this horizontally however you want you can move it whichever way you want just like with the other one because you're still using that ball head mount it's just going to be a little bit heavier just because you have an extra clamp, but still very comfortable, a little bit taller, which is really nice for me. And I can try to make a separate video about how I, how I got this Arca Swiss plate on here because it took me a little bit to figure it out. But if you have basic tools, I just used a drill. I managed to get it on there. It doesn't look the prettiest, but it works just fine. Now let's move on to the next upgrade.
All right, it's getting dark pretty quick, so I need to wrap up this video as soon as possible. But for a lot of people that do spot and stock hunting, that's mainly what I do. I find pigs and I stock them up. The way we're carrying these rifles and these tripods, we have this tripod on here, once again, so easy to put on, screws in. What we do is we fold these legs up and we're walking like this. Sometimes we'll walk six, seven miles in the night. It's insane. These get kind of heavy and having a tripod like this bog pod without having any cushion sucks on your shoulder. So I don't think I've ever seen anyone do this. If someone has, I'm sorry. I didn't try to steal your idea. I just came up with it by myself. Um, I'll post a picture of what it looks like. The, uh, what's it called? Insulative tubing for copper pipe and whatnot. I forgot what it's called. You can find it at Lowe's, Home Depot, any hardware store. I'll uh, post a picture of it right there with the size that you need to get. So I actually forgot what size of tube I needed to use because I did this a year ago. So I ran to Lowe's and bought the biggest tube that I thought was right to double check and it was. So the right tube that you need is the six foot split. So it's, it's a split tube that has adhesive on both sides, which is actually very helpful. Make sure to get that six foot length that fits half inch copper pipe and is a three quarter inch wall and make sure you get the rubber and not the polyfoam because I feel like the polyfoam pops because it has almost little bubbles in it. And I think the rubber is softer, so make sure to go this route. So I'll quickly show you how I put it on here and hopefully it makes a little bit more sense. I forgot to mention, I decided to go with one foot section lengths. It really doesn't matter what size it is, just whatever size you think is right for you. I think one foot section lengths was fine for me. And that means I could get ideally two tripods worth out of six dollars because it was only I'll post a picture of it if I haven't already. It was like six forty-seven after tax. Um, so I'll show you how I did it on a smaller section. This only fits half inch. This is way wider than half inch, but it stretches really well, like all the way around. So if you just peel off this adhesive part or the pieces that protect the adhesive, you can just slowly and steadily get it glued together or adhesive together. It's okay if you accidentally rip some of the foam, like I just ripped it right there, as long as it holds together. And once it's holding, then you can go around with your athletic tape and just wrap around and seal up all those imperfections. And it looks just like this. I actually did this way tighter which I probably shouldn't have done because now it's not as, what's the word for it, soft, cushiony. Um, I really like how Kyle did his, Kyle made his, he just wrapped it without having to compress it at all and it's way softer. So I would probably go that route, but it's all personal preference. But then it gets a way wider this, I can get a full grip. I can't really get a full grip around this, but it doesn't really matter. It all just depends on how you want to do it and it's cheap so you can, test around with yourself, see what length is good for you, what thickness is good for you. But yeah, let's get back to the video. You can buy a section of that and throw, it's like $9. You can throw it around your grips, not your grips, your legs. And then you grab athletic tape, wrap it around, and you have a lot of extra cushion that wasn't there before. I've had this on for over a year now. It's clearly showing somewhere, but I really don't take care of my stuff, to be honest with you. I I use and abuse my stuff and it's holding it very well. Compared to this, this is, I remember carrying around this thing. It was the most painful thing in the world. Whenever you want to throw this on, hopefully I can maybe make another video. Whenever David wants to upgrade this, I will show you on video how I did all this. I'm just telling you how it is right now. I believe I actually kept this small cushion, which this small cushion is almost like nothing. The only benefit of this is whenever it's cold, which by the way, whenever it's cold, aluminum sucks to hold. You have cushions on all three sides. This is not cold at all. This right here, I'm assuming was just put in just so it's not as cold right here. So 
I believe I kept this on. I'm pretty sure Kyle, he cut his off so he can get more on here, but I wanted just a little bit extra cushion. So I put my existing, um, or I put that insulative tubing over this foam insulation. Sorry, my head's going blank right now. I put it over this and it still looks just fine. You really can't tell which one is thicker, but that is another one of the most important upgrades for this bog pod just so you don't hate your life whenever you're spot and stalking for several miles all right that's all i have for you guys i need to wrap up this video as soon as possible just because it's almost pitch black outside and we need to start hunting as soon as possible but don't forget it doesn't matter how much money you spend on a tripod it doesn't matter how much money you spend on upgrades all that matters is that you can afford it and you can be outside and enjoy the outdoors i remember for probably two years of my life i rocked out with a bone stock bog pod death grip and i enjoyed every single second of it you can still be accurate with this you can still harvest whatever you want with this but if you do have the money to afford it or you start hunting heavier like me and you spend a lot of hours on a tripod like me then it could be worth the investment of making it as light as possible and making it as comfortable as possible as always my uh, my Instagram will be down in the description below. Make sure to follow that to get all the behind the scenes before I post them on YouTube. What else? Um, once again, as always, go into the comments below and ask any questions. I will try my best to answer them as soon as possible. And I hope y'all enjoy the rest of y'all's day. I will see y'all in the next one. I do my little hand thing over the camera, but y'all are a little bit far away. I'll see you later.